to cover this block. I'm going to see how we do with it, which part of this will be on this, will or won't, depending on how I feel about it when we're done here. Why? <laughs> so the AV junction, that's where the electric current gets from the SA node down into the ventricle. If we get a delay of that impulse, uh, we have what's called an AV block. Okay, so now what's what's uh, I'm gonna ask you to think for a second. I know that's scary. So if we think about that, the impulse goes from the SA node, creates a, a P wave that's upright and round. It gets to the QRS or through the AV node to create the QRS segment or complex, and we have that little interval called the PR interval, which is from the SA node and then getting down through into the ventricles. And that should take 0.12 to 0.2 seconds, right? So let's think for a minute here. Think, if that gets slowed down somewhere, what's going to happen to our PR interval? It's going to increase. It's going to get longer. So that's one of our blocks we're going to talk about here. It's what's called a first degree block, which we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. But the first degree block it really looks like a sinus rhythm pretty much all the way through with the exception of that PR interval will be greater than 0.2 seconds. That's why I wanted to go over this one now because it's now we have something to kind of compare our, you know, we have our sinus rhythm. And now I know that that question is going, well, this seems to be longer. What do I call it? Now I know what we can call it. So our AV blocks have uh, classified two ways according to the degree of the block or the side of the block. So where in that AV node is it getting blocked um, or the degree of the block, how, how severe is the block? Because what will happen is we can have a minor block like that first degree. We can have a great big nasty block like the third degree block, which does something and we'll save third degree for after Christmas for sure. Because I think we should know something about ventricular rhythms before we talk about third degree. But first, the first degree and the two second degrees, maybe we'll get through those. So, like I just said, the PR interval is the key to differentiate, differentiating the type of block. And then the key to differentiating the level of block is the width of the QRS complex. So there's questions that come up on these. Some of these seem to have a little bit wider QRSs. What, do we, what does that mean? <clears throat> And in some in our second third degree blocks, the rate also helps us in determining that level of the block. Can you go back sure. So possibly before you know four thirty or so, we'll get through first and the two second degree blocks. We will not venture into third degree today or complete block. These are all the blocks we have that go more than the left. Well, there's bundle branch blocks, but that's that's another that's another day. It's another episode in the this horror story. But these are the only A V blocks, yes. These are the A V blocks we can have. What I would ask you to know about a third degree block if this were to be on the test, is that there is a third degree block and it's also a complete block. I would know this slide. Why could they just call it a third and a fourth degree block instead of a second block one plus two? I don't know. It's it's good question. Can yeah. Can I, can I rehash something we talked about? I think yesterday to make sure I'm on the right page here. Block is in the electrical conduction system. Right. But block is created by a lack of blood flow to the muscle tissue that contains that electrical that could be a reason why, yes. It could be from heart damage, from muscular damage, or it could, you know, from blood flow. So there's not actually anything flowing through the conduction system. So, so it's, I guess when I think of block, I think of a rock cut in my hose line and now I can't get water. Right. Or you got a bunk, a plaque in an artery and we can't get blood. But it's because of right. muscle tissue that, that houses that conduction system have a problem. Okay, so the side of the block, so block in the AV node, our first, second degree, type 1, and our third degree 
block can be in the AV node, or that third degree can be in the bundle hiss or in the bundle branches. So there's that kind of classifies them by site and by location. So our second degree type 2 most commonly is in the bundle branches, but it can be in the bundle hiss, but that's more uncommon. Most of these blocks do occur up in the AV node, you see. First, second degree block. Third degree will be there. Third degree, as you can see, can be any place. Just says below the it's below the yeah below it's below the AV node it's either in in the bundle branches or in the in these yeah can you have an AV block in the bundle branches and then is that what we're going to call a bundle branch block later is that something different no bundle branch a bundle branch block is something different. And it looks different. It looks it looks different, and it, there's not going to be any confusion. Okay. You could have um, actually two of them working together. I've seen a first degree block with a bundle branch block. First degree AV. First degree AV block and the bundle branch block. So can people walk around to see? Yeah. Like yes. Normal. Yeah. Some. Yeah. And there there are people. In fact, we probably EKG everyone in this room. We might have somebody. In this room with a first degree block. That's, yeah. So, just an illustration showing where these different blocks occur. Some of you might learn information better in a table like that, some of you maybe from the diagram, but it's kind of just the same, the same information. Significance of the block is obviously the severity of the block, the rate of the escape pacemaker. So what is that? You know, what's what's it doing to us rate-wise, and then how does that patient respond with that rate? These are things that, if you ask paramedics that you know, find the oldest paramedic you know and ask them how many of these different blocks they've seen. You'll see first-degree blocks. In my experience, first degree block, pretty common. Third degree block, you'll see because generally the patient's symptomatic with the third degree block, in my experience. And then the two second degrees, it's it's like a unicorn that when someone sees one, they want to show you. They always they, The strip was the one that's hanging on the refrigerator in the station when you come to work because they found one. They've actually found one of these second degree type one or type two blocks and you know, you don't ever pin up SVT on the refrigerator unless it's like really fast. But um, these are the ones; those are the ones you will see that people will talk about. So the first degree, first degree block. This one should be one that, if we've got a somewhat of a grasp on the sinus rhythm, this one should be a, a nice little uh, second chapter to this. All, com all components of the cardiac cycle, except the PR interval, are usually within normal limits. That's why I chose to go on to this. So the things we've looked at so far classifying our sinus rhythms, everything except the PR interval should will fit that criteria. So in this block, the sinus impulse is actually not blocked at all, it's just delayed. Which, like I said before, we kind of got started. I got the cart ahead of the horse a little bit. Just makes our PR interval more than that 0 0.20 seconds. Which, those first rhythms we looked at where we did sinus or not sinus, those four that we've wrote on the whiteboard, one of those I know was a first degree block. I don't remember what the other ones, maybe there was other ones in there that were, but I remember one of those being that. So we looked at it, and you guys said, I don't know, it's 0.22 or 0.24, so it's not sinus. That's all we knew was it wasn't sinus. So now this is what that one would be. That would be a first-degree block. So it's still sinus. <laughs> first-degree block. 
right? Sinus with a first degree block. So it can't be normal sinus. It's a sinus rhythm with a first degree block. So just looking at the eyeball test, we look at that. It looks maybe even by the eyeball test looks a little long in the in the PR interval, but otherwise that looks like a sinus rhythm, correct? Looks more sinus than some of the practice ones you have, where you're going, wait a minute, how come everything's negative on this thing? I don't know why those practice problems, why those sneak in there, but sometimes they do. Because then you have one of the, just a QS, like a P wave and then a QS. So PR interval longer than 0.2 seconds. So the, Q, the QRS, this is what we just talked about with the bundle branch, usually 0.10 or 0.12 seconds or less unless the intraventricular conduction delay exists, which let's not worry about that right now, but it should be 0.12 seconds. So the QRS should be normal, narrow, like it is. Rates within normal limits. What causes it? Kind of our same, it's like our same list of stuff. Generally, no signs or symptoms with this. Okay, so second degree blocks. And this is, we'll get through these, and this is where we will call it a weekend, a week. Not two weeks, not two weeks. Okay. When some but not all atrial impulses are blocked from reaching the ventricles, second degree blocks result. Okay? So some of the P waves get through or, uh, or stimulate the AV node, and some don't. Are we still talking about delay, though, Dave? Totally blocked. Uh, now, we're, now we're totally blocked. So now we're totally blocked. Mm -hmm. If you get through, it's not blocked. Right, but the ones that don't get through are completely blocked. We're like a first degree block was just really a delay. It's just slowing it down. So, because the SA knows what's genera generating the impulse, the P waves occur regularly across the rhythm strip. So we'll see a P wave, but we don't always see a QRS. So, if before we were married and then we weren't holding hands now sometimes we're going out alone <laughs> or, we're, or we're going to the mall together but we're shopping in different places maybe that's maybe that's how we call a second degree block so if the second if the second degree block happens above the bundle of hiss then we have a second degree type 1. And if it's below or at the bundle of this, then we have a second degree type 2. Oops. Okay. So second degree block type 1. So how do we recognize this? Impulses generated by the SA node take longer and longer to conduct through the AV node to where finally one of those gets blocked. So let's think about this for a minute. Think again. The first degree block, it took longer for it to get through the AV node, and what did that cause? A lengthening, right? And a lengthening of our PR interval. So if it takes longer and longer and longer, what happens to our, a, our, I'm sorry, our PR interval? It continues to get longer and longer and longer until finally one of those impulses is blocked. So what would that cause if we block the impulse? No, no QRS, right? So we got a 
We've got a PR interval, a longer PR interval before the QRS, longer yet before the QRS to a drop beat, and then we start over. It might be three of them. That's usually the way it's always described in books, short, long, longer, drop. It could be four. It could be two, but so it's not always three, and three is kind of how we always get trained, that it's short, longer, longest, and then we lose a beat, but not always. It doesn't go that way. So we can't see what's going on with this one. Well, I guess we can. So there it is. There's our first P wave. Gets a little longer, a little longer yet. No QRS complex with that one. See that? And then we start it over again. Short, longer, longer yet, and then we don't see what's coming next, but that next one would be a drop. So this is being overrun by the next feature wave, by the next What you're saying is that it's just the interval gets longer and longer and longer, but then eventually one's just all of a sudden not there, or is one just not showing up because it's overrun? Similar to how we don't see the repolarization of oh, right. the no. reaction. My understanding is it's not getting through the AV node to okay. conduct, to cause contraction of the ventricle. Is it reducing the interval that gets longer and longer until the rest of the No, it's a PR interval. But see this one, we have a real short PR interval. This one's longer, longer yet. And then here's our P wave, but we lost our QRS. And then we start over again, short. It'll start, it'll just repeat itself. So you'll drop one beat. You mean how how many will it be longer? Yeah, so no, it could be two, it could be three. Yeah, right. That'll be consistent as well. Yeah. And they usually, like I said, the books always show three. So like every textbook you see, so they always do the short, longer, longest. But um, I've seen one of these in my life, and there was two. It was like a short, long drop, short, long. Gary, you've you've obviously been paramedic the longest of anybody here, and I said some of these blocks are fairly rare, they're unicorns, 